This is lesson one for module three, the horizontal axis wind turbine. I will explain the horizontal axis wind turbine, its specific components, the tower, the nacelle, rotor, hub assembly, the blades, and a little bit on control systems. As mentioned before, the larger wind turbines are usually of the horizontal axis design. The horizontal axis wind turbines can be divided into two subtypes. There are upwind and downwind turbines. An upwind horizontal axis wind turbine is designed to have the incoming wind pass through the blades first, then over the nacelle. As you can see at this, in this photo at the left, wind comes in, passes through the blades, then across the nacelle. A downwind horizontal axis wind turbine is designed to have the incoming wind pass over the nacelle first, then over the blades, as seen in this other drawing. Since the wind must pass over the back side of the nacelle, it's usually made a little more aerodynamic, uh, similar to what the nose cone would look like, which is what covers the hub on the upwind design. So with the upwind design, it puts a little more stress on the entire assembly than the cell, and the downwind, it actually puts less stress on the rotor. Horizontal axis wind turbines have the main shaft and electric generator at the top of the tower, and they are housed within the nacelle. The nacelle in this photo would be a very large one, size of a small bus. On this design, you would climb up the tower into the nacelle. Not all nacelles are accessible in that way. Some of the smaller ones have access panels on the sides or they have covers that can be removed. They're usually on hinges with pneumatic cylinders. All right, let's get to sizes of the hot. Small size wind turbines are designed for residential and agricultural use. These are often very simple, quiet, less efficient, utilize battery storage, and are sometimes tied into the grid. This particular one is a small upwind turbine. The wind would be passing through the blades first, then across the nacelle. And this type, since it's small, it doesn't have control systems to change its yaw position. The direction of the wind actually blowing across the tailpiece is what keeps it facing into the wind so it has no additional control system for that. The blades are also pitched mechanically with a passive system. Medium-sized wind turbines are for larger agricultural and commercial use. These turbines may use active control systems to better enhance performance and are often grid-tied. This model, shown in the photo, is an Endurance E3120 and it's a downwind type. You can see the aerodynamic quality, the nacelle shape is like a football and the blade design is slightly different. They're actually curled back a little bit. This is a 50 kilowatt type and it's located at the South Prairie View Ogden Elementary School in Illinois. It has a solid tubular type tower with a platform at the top and also a means of climbing for maintenance on the wind turbine. Large size wind turbines are used in wind farms for the purpose of aiding the electrical grid and each turbine is usually capable of producing 1 million watts or 1 megawatt or more. The largest, most powerful wind turbines are usually horizontal axis wind turbines. These turbines make use of monitoring and control systems and other advanced systems to allow them to aid the grid effectively. They also have blade pitch control and also motor drives to yaw the rotor into and out of the wind. The model shown is a Vestas V82 upwind type, that is the wind blows into the rotor first and across the nacelle. It's 1.65 megawatts or 1,650,000 watts at peak power, and this is located at the Fowler Ridge Wind Farm in Indiana. As you can see its height is a lot greater than the others at 260 feet. Major sections of small size horizontal axis wind turbines would include the pad, which is at the base, it acts as the platform for the tower. Also guy wires, 
hold the tower upward by, by preventing it from swaying. It makes it a little more rigid. So you can see this is a lattice tower. Mass types are the lattice section types. So for a small size they can use tubes, lattice Also the nacelle at the top and that houses the generator, the gearbox if it's required, and the other shafts and components. And also the rotor, and that's comprised of the blades and the hub, the hub being at the center. Major sections of a medium size horizontal axis wind turbines, the foundation, which may have reinforced concrete, um, usually with bolt anchors uh, protruding out from the concrete so that the tower actually bolts to it. The nacelle houses some control systems for the larger types. The generator, gearbox, shafts, and other components, and the rotor, which is also blades and hub. And it may have a simple electronic system in there or a hydraulic system to adjust the blades but it may also use passive control or passive mechanical. Major sections of a large size horizontal axis wind turbine. The foundation, which sometimes has a cutout area for cables. Then there's the tower and also power and control systems at the base for some designs. It's also the nacelle that houses power and control systems, the generator, gearbox, and shafts. The nacelle is accessible by a ladder from within, within the tower. Maintenance technicians are able to climb within the larger nacelles. They actually go in a, a bulkhead door and they're able to climb a series of ladders to different platforms, usually two or three, and get to the base of the nacelle and actually go inside of the nacelle to do maintenance. This particular type has a nacelle that's about as roomy as a cargo van. There's room for about three or four techs with all of the equipment in there taking up the, the other space. Also the rotor which is made up of the blades and the hub assembly. The rotor also will have the active pitch control devices in it and also with the nacelle it actually can pivot on the tower in order to face the rotor into the wind it does this by a, a yaw motor system which is another control system that's required in the larger towers with the smaller design a few slides ago you would have seen the tail fin and the tail fin allows the smaller wind turbine to self adjust into the wind but with the larger ones that's not practical so it must be done using a wind vane to detect the direction of the wind and then adjust the nacelle slowly. Large size horizontal axis wind turbine, the tower section. With these larger wind turbines, the tower sections are brought in pre-assembled, that is they have the ladders and everything and lighting in them, and they are stacked together with large cranes. You may or may not be able to see this in the video, but in the PDF you should be able to see these three construction workers at the top of this of the mid tower section. It gives you an idea of about how large these are. Maintenance technicians enter the tower through the bulkhead door. Also there would be a platform at the bottom. This is the down tower, the lower platform. Technicians reach the nacelle at the very top by use of ladders and tower platforms. Also, climb assist devices and fall prevention systems are used. Also, a diagram of the tower assembly. The tower assembly is often comprised of three sections. The lowest section is from the foundation up, slightly past the middle deck. As you can see here, this area all the way up to this faint gray line is the lower tower section. The middle section is just from above the mid deck up through the top above the saddle deck. The top section is from above the saddle deck up to the yaw bearing and that con is what contains the yaw deck. It's usually a short distance from the yaw deck to entrance 
into the nacelle. Some designs have the ladders in a straight line and some of them have offset designs where the ladder will go up to one section then you have to walk over walk over, climb up another section it limits the fall from say this area from a little bit above the saddle deck to the saddle deck itself rather than possibly all the way down this image shows the nacelle, rotor, and tower with the top tower section removed this reveals the ladders, decks, and cabling. Some towers have a lift for parts or personnel. So this shows man lift cables, the yaw deck, the nacelle, the hub assembly at the front, the access ladders, the blade, and the middle tower section. You can see in this design the ladders are offset from one another. And there's also a small ladder that allows you to climb from the yaw deck up into the nacelle. Here's another view of the same thing, looking downward. Sometimes the access ladder of each section are off offset, as shown below. You can see the ladder coming up to this saddle deck and then the access ladder going up to the yaw deck. Okay, with large size horizontal axis wind turbines, keeping in mind these are the large commercial sized uh, grid tied wind turbines that are used on large wind farms. Back corner of the nacelle and the really the whole top end, top area of the tower and we're removing the nacelle housing which isn't done on the larger ones unless changing out the generator or some major components and the frame of the nacelle. So here's the fiberglass, um, usually fiberglass construction. So here's the nacelle housing and it's usually made of fiberglass also this reveals the framing and internal components also the safety harness rail or in case you need to climb on top of the nacelle where the anemometer and other devices are located and also the bed plate that's the lower framing almost like the chassis of the nacelle and that rests on top of the yaw bearing that allows the nacelle to turn about a vertical axis to keep the rotor facing the wind for changing wind directions Looking closer, see at the top the anemometer, uh, the control cabinet. Also looking at the front, the nose cone, the blades hub, the rotor lock, so that when maintenance techs climb up there, they have a means of locking the rotor into place. You see the pillow blocks that hold the bearings for the, high, for the low speed shaft, also the gearbox that increases the RPM and the generator and cooling system also the transformers if they are located in the cell sometimes they're at the bottom just depends on the design here is some of a sort of an above view from the side you see the top tower section removed the internals of it, you climb up the ladder to the saddle deck, up to the yaw deck, and then there's a small ladder and a hatch to get into the nacelle. And you would see inside of the nacelle the gearbox, these pillow blocks, the hatches to get to the top of the nacelle, and the anemometers and weather instruments. This is just a, another view. Also, you can see part of the lighting. Here's a photo of the nacelle. We have the tie-off rail at the top. Also the anemometer and weather instruments. The Federal Aviation Administration light. The nacelle housing. And the approximate height from the bottom of the nacelle to the top. 
and the location of the yaw. This is the pivoting point to keep the blade into the wind. And that's done by large electric motors. So the nacelle rests on top of a bearing called a yaw bearing. Motor drive systems rotate the nacelle into and out of the wind. The anemometers, wind vanes, and other control systems determine what direction the wind is blowing, and they rotate the nacelle atop the tower accordingly. Keep in mind that this system is required to yaw the nacelle. The nacelle shown weighs approximately 40 tons. That's a little more than three school buses. So you think it doesn't move really that quickly into the wind, but the shifts in wind direction usually don't happen too rapidly unless there's some the basic workings of the nacelle are explained in the next slide. It shows a see-through view of the pane shown from a slightly different angle. So you see this black box here. We're going to do a zoom in and look at how it's attached to the yaw. See here the bed plate, basically the chassis of the nacelle. Its yaw breaks so that once it moves the nacelle into position, it locks it into that plate into that position, and that's also for safety when maintenance technicians climb up in there. There's the nacelle access ladder, one of the yaw motor drives, usually there are four. Also the yaw bearing and yaw gear. The top tower section of course has been removed, as you can see its original outline. This would be the hatch for the yaw deck and the access ladder coming up from the saddle deck also the lighting and the cabling coming down from the generator. There's also equipment at the top of the tower to ensure the nacelle is locked and that just depends on the design and also the rotor lock could be located there. Below we can see the fiberglass cover that's been removed from the cell and that reveals the frame and other components. The nose cone has been removed also and one of the blades. Well, it reveals the hub and this design is similar to other large wind turbines. See there's a tie off ring that's connected to the frame of the hub and the nose cone that's basically plastic or fiberglass, maybe some type of other material, and it is for aerodynamic purposes. Also the blades remove the blade root and it attaches to the, the blade bearing face. And there's also the low speed shaft cover shown, which is like a step to climb over the low speed shaft. The motor drive turns the ring gear, an internal spur gear, it's attached to the blade root in order to pitch the lengthy blades. The blade can be ac accessed by crawling into the front of the hub, or the side on some designs, and entering the blade through its removed access panel. This space is considered a confined space by OSHA and other standards. So you can see the blade pitch motor drive for this blade. The gear, it's an internal ring gear, and as the motor drive turns, it simply rotates the blade on its bearing. The low speed shaft is held into place by bearing pillow blocks, and that's basically the, the, the hub assembly. We will take a look at the area in the black box, the motor drive, later. Okay, the basic layout within a smaller nacelle. You see the low speed shaft and the lock for the rotor. Also the bearing pillow blocks. These are what um, mount the bearings to the frame or the bed plate. Also the gearbox, the brake on the high speed shaft, 
There's also a flex coupler for vibration dampening and the generator. Here's the basic layout within a larger 1 megawatt nacelle, the previous being approximately 5 kilowatts to 10 kilowatts. Here's the low speed shaft, a very large bearing pillow block, it's about 3 feet wide, and the low speed shaft connecting into the gearbox. After the gearbox is the high speed shaft that's shown from the back side of the gearbox. There's a large brake caliper and brake disc on the high speed shaft. The high speed shaft then connects to the generator and the generator has its own cooling system. As we talked about before there are losses with power conversion from one form into another. Changing mechanical energy into electrical energy you do lose some of that in the form of heat and that's where efficiencies come in. If 5% of the energy is lost to heat then it's 95% efficient. Okay, as I said we get to the blade pitch control system the blade pitch control is accomplished by motors and also hydraulic systems are used. The blade pitch control motor below controls the blade pitch by just turning the blade's ring gear. You see the end of the drive would have a gear and the root of the blade on the inside has a gear and this is the access to that. And also the control systems and cooling fans for the motor are shown. The yaw, which is the vertical axis rotation of the nacelle, is achieved by the use of motor drives as seen below. See this mounts through the bed plate to the yaw gear and they rotate in sync with one another and they slowly turn the nacelle into the wind or out of the wind if, if power is not needed. The geometry of the blades is designed to maximize the amount of electricity the wind turbine can produce over a wide range of wind speeds. As we talked about earlier, it's larger at the root, it gets smaller towards the tip, it's also twisted, and other aerodynamic designs utilized in this shape. The blades one way to limit the wear and fatigue problems on the blade is the angle of the entire rotor. This is called teetering. Blades are positioned perpendicular to the shaft. That would be no teetering. There's also teetering where the wind flexes the blade at the top half of the swept area, so it's tilted, the shaft is tilted upward. And then there's an, a design where wind flexes the blade at the bottom of the swept area and that's with the shaft tilted downward. Wind turbine blades can be made from a variety of materials. Vibration, balance, angular stresses, and flexing are all considered for each design. Wood, fiberglass reinforced polyester, or wood epoxy for smaller blades, and various other natural and composite materials are used. Aluminum and other metals are used for small to medium sized blades. Composite materials such as plastic, fiberglass, carbon fiber are used to make all sizes of blades including very large blades. Most commercial wind turbine blades are made from fiberglass and have a hollow core. Other materials may be used in the core for rigidity and protection against vibrations or other stress factors. A typical fiberglass blade that is about 50 feet in length weighs around 2,500 pounds. Advantages and disadvantages of one, two, and three blade wind turbines. With a single blade turbine, 
advantages are they're the least expensive, they're light in weight, they're simple design, and they're easy to install. Disadvantages, they're very noisy because they need to rotate very quickly to have a high amount of power. Because of that high velocity, the counterbalance rotor is prone to malfunction, such as vibrations, and also it's odd looking having one blade with a counterweight on it. With a two blade design, advantages are it will direct itself into the wind, produces more energy than a single blade turbine. Disadvantages, it's noisy because it still requires high RPM for a good power output, good amount of power. And it has less power than a three blade design. The three blade turbine has advantages such as it's the quietest operation, has low vibration, also uses blade pitch control systems. Aesthetically it looks, I guess, normal. They're often built on ta tall towers to allow the more efficient blades to capture higher wind speeds. Disadvantages, they're very heavy, they're costly. Also yaw control that's required to move the rotor into the wind is uh, another cost and also construction costs. The turbine rotor is made up of the blades, the pitch system if it's equipped with it, hub, and the nose cone. The turbine rotor has a tie-off ring that's used for maintenance techs when working within the hub or descending into one of the blades for maintenance or just to inspect. The blade pitch and nacelle yaw controls. This photo shows a blade pitch motor drive as it looks within a GE 1.6 megawatt turbine. The YouTube link below will connect you to a video that discusses drive systems by Bosch Rex Roth for you to get a better visual understanding of these systems. If you can't see the link, you should be able to follow it through the PDF. horizontal axis wind turbine, the control systems. Below is an example of a high-speed shaft braking system. The arrows indicate the direction of the control and signals. The device, and this is exa example, is the wind turbine rotor. The device sensor is the rotor speed sensor. The sensor signal is the data signal that's representative of the shaft's RPM. The set point is the maximum rotor speed that is the speed that is considered unsafe for the rotor. PLC controller compares the sensor signal to the set point and initializes the drivers if necessary to activate other components. And drivers, it acts as the power transducer and that allows the PLC to control the devices. So here the wind turbine rotates too fast, the sensor signal increases, and if the signal is higher than the set point within the controller, the program activates the drivers and other devices to maybe pitch the blades or apply brakes or both if necessary, maybe even move the nacelle out of the direction of the wind. Key terms for this presentation are the upwind horizontal axis wind turbine and the downwind, also grid tied, standalone systems, and the cell teetering, the tower and the different types, the hub, nose cone, bearing pillow block, low speed shaft, high speed shaft, braking, rotor locks, the yaw deck, the saddle deck, and the mid deck the down tower assembly where control systems are located at the base of the tower and that is in larger wind turbines also the controller the anemometer and the yaw the yaw being the adjustment of the nacelle and, and rotor assembly into the wind or out of the wind you 
you should have completed or have almost completed the reading and the quiz needs to be completed by the end of this unit or this week and that's all